I love coming up here. Uh, again, I was away at school for high school. I was away at school for college. It was the thing I mainly came home for. I did a lot of horseback riding. You know, I helped work cattle. I, uh, you know, enjoyed the place. I would go camping. My sisters similarly. It was just a special place. My name is Stephen Wiley, and I'm the son of the family who built this house in 1961. We're in North Fork, California, which is partway between Fresno and Yosemite, uh, near the Bass Lake area. We're basically in the foothills of the Sierras. Summing up what this house is, is not easy. It is certainly a mid-century modern house. It has a very oriental flavor to it. And I think that's partly because one of the architects working on it was Japanese. It also brings in a lot of nature in this area. All of the stone in this house was quarried just up the road from here. The architect of this house was John Rex of the firm of Hamilton Rex. The firm was principally a commercial architecture firm. Uh, to my knowledge, he did very few houses, uh, this one being an exception. We met John Rex through a, an artist named Rico Lebrun, who uh, was a very well-known artist in the 50s and 60s. And my mother, who was a painter, studied with him. And the, the Lebruns became very close friends. He was like a second father to me, and the Rexes were good friends of theirs, and that's how we got to know them. When he designed this house, he thought we were crazy building a nice house way out in the country. By the time he was done, he had bought property in the area, built his own house, and he and his wife lived there for many years. I really can't say how the design came to be. I, I was in school at the time uh, when we were building this house. I was in high school and away at school, so I didn't have any input or knowledge of how this, these decisions got made. I suspect my mother had a great deal to do with it. She was a, an artist and uh, had strong ideas about how these things should be. And so. I'm guessing her influence was significant. I helped briefly. I had a summer job up here in the summer of 1961, I believe it was. I didn't get any of the fun work. I got to work on the foundation and pouring a lot of concrete. I did get to participate a little bit in the quarrying of the granite for the side of the house. As I mentioned, that all came for about two, three hundred yards up the road from here, and we literally dynamited it out of the hills. The house is not terribly large. It's about, uh, I want to say, 22, 2300 square feet. The living room takes up probably 60% of the area of the house. The interesting part of the design of this house is this module. If you look at the ceiling, you can see it's, it's like a series of umbrellas that are tied together. And uh, each of those umbrellas is 14 feet square. Uh, so that gives you an idea of the, of the scale. One of the interesting things and one of the things we're thankful for is the, the vertical beams that are here. 60 years have not warped or bent or anything that could have uh, in any way compromised the design of the house. It's, this house has stayed amazingly intact. We were incredibly lucky with the builder that we got who built this house. Uh, there really isn't anybody up in this area who could build a house like this. A man named Dean Farrar took the job turned out to be a meticulous man, which is why uh, a lot of the joinery that you see here worked. Otherwise, it could have been a complete mess. He was so meticulous that he realized that he really didn't want to be a contractor anymore when he finished the house. And we actually hired him as the manager of the ranch. And uh, he lived in a home, which is the house that I live in now, for a number of years before he retired. 
Uh, the noteworthy furniture in this house was designed by Sam Malouf, who was a very fine woodworker, very well known, again, of an era of this house. Sam was a close family friend. My mother, after she stopped being a painter, uh, founded what became the Craft and Folk Art Museum in Los Angeles. And one of the early exhibits was, uh, was Sam Malouf with his furniture. Uh, and uh, when we moved up here, it was the obvious choice. And he designed the, the dining room table that you see in here, the side table, a couple of the chairs. And actually there was a few other pieces that are no longer in the house, but that was the principal furniture that was in this house. The ranch was originally purchased in 1959, and it was only about a third the size that it is now. Over the years, as adjacent pieces of property became available, they got acquired. And so now we have about, the main ranch is about 3,000 acres, but it's a working ranch. We have about 200 cows. So we raise calves every year that we sell in the spring. And uh, as you drive around, you can probably see some of them. So that's the business of the ranch, and that's been going pretty much since we got the place. It evolved that way. It wasn't at the very beginning. My father's claim is he bought a ranch because his parents would never let him have a pony as a child. This was his revenge, but it was his passion, and he was up here pretty religiously every other weekend. The characteristics that I enjoy the most is the fact that it brings the outdoors in. It feels like you're very much in the middle of the country here and it, it changes with the seasons. And it's a very comfortable place to be. Uh, where we're sitting right now is where everybody tends to congregate. Those are my best memories of it, being up here with family and with my friends. It's surprisingly faithful to the way it was when we first got it. It's obviously certain things have been upgraded and changed, but nothing that is visible. Uh, the house is pretty much the, the way it was. And, uh, you know, maintenance is what we've mostly done on it. The house right now, since none of the family is using it, is it's on Airbnb. We want people to come up who appreciate this kind of architecture, who appreciate the furniture, and really being out in the middle of nowhere. You could be totally away from anything. We're delighted to share it, and uh, especially with people who uh, can be respectful and appreciative of what's in it, and the work that's gone into it, and the art that's in it. I'm hoping the future of the ranch is something that my family continues to love and, and want to support. At the moment, you know, I'm managing it. I've taken it over from my father who died in 2016. My mother died uh, in 1999. It was his place until he died. I've tried to be a little more inclusive and I'm hoping one of my children or one of my sister's children are going to pick up the ball from me in a few years. There will be an obvious point where it makes sense to pass it down. I'm delighted to see the family members that come and love it. I have grandchildren who can't wait to get up here and they are experiencing it the same way I did. So I think it's going to stay in the family for a long time. The structure of the ranch is a limited partnership now. Uh, when my father got older, he started gifting shares in this ranch into this partnership so that before he died, he had given all of his interest in it away. 30 some odd family members who have an interest in the ranch. And, you know, my only hope is that they use it and want to keep using it uh, for as long as they want to.